Welcome. Thanks for joining me for your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 23rd of March for the Sun or the Ascendant. Can I ask you a big favour, please? If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now, but also very grateful. Because I was poorly for five years, I have got behind a little bit. So the more signals that YouTube gets in terms of my subscribers, the more my videos will be shared. So if you can help me with this, I'd be really, really pleased. This week begins in such a dramatic fashion. At 9.28 on Monday in London, we have a new moon in Aries. The Aries new moon is so exciting because it's about initiation, it's about fresh approaches, and because of the fire energy of Aries, it gives the moon uh, much more ferocity to make things happen. So this is really impressive, but also it does embrace the new moon, uh, Chiron, the wounded healer, the comet, which is really quite symbolic if we think what the world is dealing with at this time because the energy of the new moon can invigorate the energy of Chiron to try to help us to find ways that we can fight back against the COVID-19 virus. Now that may mean that we all have to adapt and change our personal approaches, but there are going to be some collective uh, things we may need to do as well. And this new moon's broad alliance with Saturn in Aquarius is brilliant because uh, Aquarius energy is about the group. So Saturn, having moved here, is concentrating our minds on how we need to support and collaborate with one another. However, there is a, a more testing angle to this new moon, which comes in the guise of the North Node, that notional point which is very much to do with the emotional direction of travel that we're currently in, in the sign of Cancer through to the 4th of May. And it's possible that if we do set our intent on this new moon to achieve something positive, it's important that we're not out of sync with our own instincts and emotional needs. So starting something new, we just need to be mindful of our environment and how it feels. Talking of how it feels, if you are meeting someone for a first date, the first half of this week could really be quite seminal because uh, Neptune and Venus forge a quite beautiful link. Or you could find yourself having a lovely moment of unity with someone, a friend, a family member. It could be very, very beautiful. But then in the second half of this week, Venus forges an absolutely wonderful angle to Mars, Jupiter and Pluto. And this can transform all our, our approaches to relating in quite an interesting way. Because of course, Venus is in the sign of Taurus, which can be about more material instincts, it can be about more sensual matters, so it's all very earthy this. So if we are attracted to an, a new approach or a new person, it may be that they're going to bring something into our world which is more substantive. That sounds really good. However, a more challenging influence this week is the square between Saturn, newly arrived in Aquarius, and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. Because both of these are the co-rulers of Aquarius, they're very much about innovation but in different ways. Saturn gives us the courage to change the structures which are more traditional, bit, bit by bit, whereas Uranus is much more the rebel. So because they're both in fixed signs, there may be things that we do need to change and adapt that we could find ourselves resisting, and that can create some tensions. Just be mindful of that. But as this week draws to a close, Mercury, in the sign of Pisces, finally emerges from shadow. So where the retrograde first began on the 16th of February, if we go back before then, and where uh, Mercury first went into shadow in the sign of Pisces on the 3rd of February, I think that you're going to find that things do speed up in all sorts of ways, and that's going to be very pleasing for us all. Your specific forecast, Aquarius, sees Saturn, your uh, traditional ruler, in a great link with the Sun. This is very stabilizing. This starts the week off for you, 
And then, of course, we have the new moon. The new moon's in your sector of ideas. So great for really starting to express to others anything that's been building up in the back of your mind for some while. So write that blog, send that text, all that application in. If you are someone who works in some kind of media situation, the, the next month can be very positive for you. But also because Chiron is linked to this se sector of your situation, if you have been feeling a bit stressed out or exhausted, particularly with Mars making its way through your 12th solar house, I think it is a good opportunity to also have some downtime where you just chat happily, mix and mingle at a more social level. Venus is in the part of your horoscope to do with your home. Are you planning to make some changes there? Something that you've been wanting to do for some time can really start to take shape. Maybe it's going to be to get some plans drawn. Maybe you're going to investigate a new kitchen or bathroom. But some kind of makeover is definitely possible in the next week or so. And it can delight you if you go for it. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for having watched your weekly video. As I said before, I'd be so grateful for those subs, likes or comments. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to my monthly uh, astrology magazine and regular mail outs, please click the link below. You can also get your free daily horoscope in so doing. Or you can order your 12 month personal horoscope based on your time, date and place of birth. And you get your character analysis with this in a deal where you get 30% off. Or you can choose to have a one-to-one -one with me personally. Thank you so much.